And thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I definitely appreciate it. And if this content is something you like, please hit the like and subscribe button. I work really hard on these videos. And the best way you can support me is by smashing those two buttons. So thanks, I appreciate it. Today we're going to look at how I use OBS Studio, my stream deck, virtual cables, etc. in Zoom. So what I've actually done right now is I've started a Zoom meeting just with myself and I have recorded the audio, not from my microphone, but as you would hear it if you were a student in my classroom, my virtual classroom. <laughs> so uh, I have another video that shows the setup of OBS and all the stuff that I do in the background. Um, and all the things that you may you might want to do to, to get this rolling on your end. So be sure to watch that video if you find this interesting and then want to implement this yourself. But the goal of using OBS and the goal of using this entire setup really is to just increase student engagement and ultimately improve learning via Zoom, right? Uh, improve that virtual classroom. So here is what, um, you know, like a single person Zoom meeting looks. I have my OBS set up here on my desktop too, so you can see them both working simultaneously. And I wanted to share with you um, some of the fun things that I do. So again, you're going to be hearing audio as if you're a student. And usually I log into my Zoom meetings about five to 10 minutes early, just depending. And I will activate the starting soon uh, scene that I've created. Now keep in mind, I have the starting soon scene set up on my um, stream deck. So I could just hit the starting button. So when I'm ready to start class, I would um, hit the me icon, which is it's, it's my scene that just says, hey, that's just me and the camera and uh, you know, introduce what we're gonna learn for the day, talk about uh, you know, the, the hurdles we're gonna tackle, um, you know, just check in with the students, that sort of thing, and get class underway. Now some things to keep in mind when you are presenting in Zoom is one, to have some really good lighting, right? So I have um, like four lights plus this overhead light that illuminates me and my background very well. Some people might think that the background is fake, but it's not. I prepared that as well. I'm going to uncrop and I'll pan my camera so that you can see it's really just a backdrop with some lighting and some shelving. Although this isn't necessary, this is another step that you could take just to be that much more professional in the virtual classroom environment. So I'm going to go back to my crop mode now. Um, this just helps me zoom in and take up about a third of the screen, which is really where you want to be. Uh, you know, rule of thirds applies for sure. And then about a third of the screen is probably about optimum. Now I am running a, a relatively nice camera. You don't need a crazy expensive camera. I just already had this. So I said, well, might as well use it. Um, you can pick up some really good web cameras for a relatively low cost and still use this whole setup, right? So you don't need a crazy camera. Although it, I do love this thing. It's a Sony a7 III with a 24 GM f1.4 lens, which makes these really nice bokeh balls. Wait, where is that? Uh, uh, there, <laughs> in the background. So I've just kind of cheesed the lighting a little bit to make it that much more appealing. Okay, so let's talk about how I might use Zoom in class. Now we covered the starting scene. Um, generally speaking, I take uh, a five minute break at about the halfway mark through the lecture. And so when I tell my students, hey, five minute break, I'll go ahead and switch to the break screen, which is, I call it a bio break, right? Just students can get water, um, they can stretch, they can make the phone calls or send the text to their friends that they've really been dying to send their text to. But um, allowing them this break and then them knowing they have this break means that they can put off those text messages or those phone calls until this time. So it's kind of nice. So here's what the, the bio break scene looks like the be right back screen. Oops, that's my right screen. <laughs> the be right back. And I can switch back to me any point in time and again, start that conversation. 
Likewise, I'm able to share both my monitors, which I accidentally shared just right now. So there's my right screen monitor where I would share like SolidWorks or any of the software that I'm showing. Um, the resolution is really good, but it is dependent on your internet connection. So if you have good internet connection, your students will be able to see this. Again, I can go to my right hand screen now and then rotate anything that I wanted to rotate. Talk about, uh, you know, features, adding sensors, talking about uh, switching tabs and so on. And this is really seamless. Now, this is an improvement, in my opinion, over sharing a screen because sharing seems kind of clunky. You have to go click share, then you have to share what monitor, and then maybe you have to choose if you want to share an audio or not, and then so on. And then if you want to switch monitors later, it's really clunky. You unshare, reshare, and then that sort of thing. But really with OBS, we're able to switch between my right-hand monitor, then back to me for some more discussion, and then maybe to my my main monitor, which just happens to be an ultra wide. And so you're gonna see essentially a repeat of, <laughs> well, me just over and over again because I'm recording, but uh, it allows me to switch this really easily, right? So um, then back to me and so on. And so this is kind of fun. And when you're, when you're delivering, a, say, a PowerPoint, I could close my SolidWorks, Go back to my right screen, talk about a PowerPoint, go into PowerPoint mode, just like you normally would. Again, everything's really legible. And then back to discussion. And you're doing this over and over again. Well, now, typically in Zoom, right, when you share a screen, it's just so clunky to share a screen that you never bother to switch back so that you can engage with your students, like face-to-face, -face, if you will. And OBS and the Stream Deck just really make that, that whole transition so smooth and so sweet and slick. And cut. Battery died. We're back. Rule number one, make sure you have a fresh battery, I suppose, when you're recording. Classic. Okay, so we talked about the Be Right Back screen, the uh, Bio Break screen, the Starting screen, and those are all really great, handy kind of additives to have. Now, now I don't use those all the time. This, there's very specific times to use those, and and um, they have their purpose, and that's, that's where they kind of sit. But I find myself in the me screen or the right hand screen or the main screen quite a bit. Now I have my stream deck and again, I, you know, I showed you kind of how um, these, these little graphical buttons, these macro buttons allow me to switch in between those scenes a lot. But a lot of the time I'm in the me screen and we're giving a lecture or I'm in the, you know, the, the PowerPoint screen. And one of the really cool things about, you know, just being in the in the Stream Deck interface is the ease of switching, right? So I can switch in between the two really quickly. And I can switch back to me. You can have a conversation about the thing we just talked about, right? And so typically when I finish that thought process or I finish that um, that key concept that I wanted the students to learn, right? I can, I can ask a question and then hopefully get some feedback. Generally speaking, my students are pretty darn good at it, but there are those awkward moments. Um, more awkward moments than I would want them to be. Those silent moments where it's like, come on guys, we just went over this. <laughs> What's the deal? And so you can throw out the things like Bueller. 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 And I just hit the Bueller icon on my screen. That's just like, come on, right? <laughs> we just talked about this. And then usually the students that are maybe distracted or looking down would look up because there's some other sort of audio on the screen. Again, capturing their attention. Likewise, sometimes I'll get someone who wants to respond. I see them talking. I see the hands moving. I don't hear any words. Classic. They're muted, right? They, they either misclicked the unmute or forgot they were muted or whatever. Or maybe I muted them because there was some sound echoing. So I'll go ahead and hit the what you say icon. What you say. Now, the students know that when they hear the what you say that someone's muted and they need to unmute themselves for me to hear them. And so it's just like this conditional thing. Now that beats me saying, oh, hey, so-and-so, you're unmuted, or you're muted, unmute yourself, right? It's kind of, it's just bland, right? Instead, I just smash the audio key and what you say comes on, classic. I always get some smiles off of that one. Um, another kind of scenario that I run into is when, like, like for instance, with like presentations, let's say, Someone just nails it. I mean, the whole thing, the presentation, the concept, the design, it's all there, right? And um, I only use this one definitely when it's warranted. And I, I feel like my students want to get this audio feedback because it's like, yeah, I did it, right? So I give them the... You make me a believer. That was an excellent presentation, right? That could be some of the follow-up after that. 
So, and, and there's a whole bunch like this and you can build this in OBS and you can build this in Zoom. Um, or it, it, it naturally flows into Zoom through OBS rather. And you can build this on your stream decks so that you can just smash these buttons and, and do some really cool things. Now I have some other ones where I've kind of built in some personality in there. Like I've thrown in some Star Wars and some Star Trek. I got uh, Yoda. Try not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. This is perfect for like those really tough lectures or it's like just a concept that's rather tough or maybe maybe we're running through CAD and it's just a really tough set of features or sketches that we have to make. And so I'm just like motivating my students. Hey, press on to the next step. You got this. Come on, let's go. You got it. Um, or maybe we're getting at the end. Of, we're getting at the end of time for the class and it's, we're like we just a little bit more and we can we can call this a day. Like, come on, let's go. Let's push it. Live long. And prosper. Again, that's just some personality things that I could throw in there. Hadouken from Street Fighter. And that's just like, you know, someone makes a good point, Hadouken, right? Like, why not? Um, I also have some some music that's that's kind of fun too. So I've I've thrown in uh, well well believer was a good one, and I've also thrown in BTS. Yeah. I mean who doesn't like some good tunes and some good beats while you're in class, right? And then maybe a student gave a presentation and it was it was good, right? Hey, you lighted it up like dynamite, you know. So um, so you can build a whole bunch of these little custom keys in that that make these segues really cool. The one the one that I use a lot too for for not getting responses from students is the snow. So you can see the snow overlay in in um, in Zoom. And again, it's just like a classic. Like, oh, come on, guys, it's getting cold in here. And then everyone's like, you know, oh, he's got you know. Um, He's got snow on his face. That's cool. And one of the things that's important to know when you're in the Zoom interface is you can spotlight yourself to make your video the main view for everyone that is that is watching. And I definitely suggest you do that every time you, you start Zoom is just spotlight yourself and you, then you won't have to worry about it for the rest of the time. That, that gives your screen, your virtual screen, your OBS screen priority over everyone else's and makes it the main focal point for talking. Um, some other things that I kind of liked, you know, um, so I have um, some Mandalorian quotes in here. I have, this is the way. So I'll finish up like a like a, a rather serious conversation about say draft and injection molding. And like, you have to have draft when you injection mold. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. You have to do it, right? Um, some other ones that I like is like, you know, I'll make a good point about something full circle, my whole conversation about a topic, connect all the dots, right? And then I get the ahas from the students, like you can see their heads lift up, which is great. Like those those visual cues are awesome. It's the same visual cue I got in the classroom, only I don't have to look around for it. I have a little screen that, that shows me all my students and I get the ahas, which is cool. But then, you know, <laughs> I'll throw in I have spoken. This is the way. Um, again, some of my, my, my character, um, personality I've kind of thrown into this, um, into this deck here. Um, I have a whole bunch. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of them. Now, I don't use all, every single one of them in, in the classroom environment on any given day. Maybe I'll use five or six of these and only when it's warranted, right? Overusing these things is equally as bad, but, um, you know, like I have, um, I have a blooper, right? So if I, like there's been times where I've just said the same word three times over and over again. I've mispronounced it. It was just like one of those days. Maybe it was a long day and I just mispronounced the word. And so it's blooper. Like, ugh, I can't even say that right now. We're going to go on. Um, or, you know, if you wanted to add some um, something kind of fun, we could do um, the I have a Warriors one. So usually a lot of my students don't um, don't know about the Warriors from back in the day or, or old movies in general for whatever reason. We gotta fix that. But uh, instead of instead of me saying, um, "Does that make sense? Do you understand? Are we tracking?" Sometimes I'll throw in some of these other audio clips that I have. One of them is, of course, the hand gestures when these are playing. It just makes it even more epic. And you're and again, you get laughs, you get participation, and and more importantly, you're, you're like captivating a hundred percent of their attendance. So you're reeling them back in all the time, keeping them from getting distracted from all the other things that they normally have to do. Have you even thrown in some um, some like hip hop beats besides BTS? Of course, that's kind of like a a good beat um, around USC anyway. The culture there, there's there's a lot of dance culture, and a lot of my students are actually in these like dance groups, 
and uh, when you're walking off campus late at night, you definitely see, uh, you know, all these groups like in the parking lots, just, you know, the music's turned up and they're all doing a routine and it's it's fantastic. And so I threw in some like, I like the way you work, kid. No diggity. I mean, why not? I like the way you worked it. You did great on this presentation. I like the way you created all these features. I like the way you did X. So a couple of the last things I'm just going to throw out there is I have some ending scenes. I have like an Elfin ending scene with the old shutter reel kind of moving. And then I have um, like a Looney Tunes ending scene. I, there's, a, there's a couple of them. I, I haven't quite figured out which ones work the best the, or the way I want them to work specifically, but I'm just trying some things out. And so that's the whole idea here is that you're you're just adding a little bit of extra. You're putting a little bit more effort. Your students see that and appreciate it. And I got to tell you, I've gotten some outstanding feedback from my students on, you know, anonymous surveys, both in Blackboard and then, you know, college run surveys um, where I get the results and get to see them. And, you know, and then just flat out, I get some students that stick around afterwards and they just tell me, like, no one else at USC is doing this. No other professor is doing this. Right. And this is awesome. Don't stop. We appreciate the effort like we are full swing here. So I got to tell you from like a professor standpoint here, you know, I'm in the I'm in the, the teaching environment from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. sometimes. And those days can get long. This helps me have fun. This helps my students have fun, um, keeps them engaged, uh, allows me to reel them in for discussion where I really want them to talk and all around just in totally improves the online virtual teaching environment. And it's so easy to set up. Now I have a video, it's about 30 minutes long, but it walks you through the setup from start to finish with every pick and click along the way so that you can get OBS running on your system, add in some of your character personality with these little overlays and start using this in your Zoom meetings right away. The cost associated with this isn't all that much either. If you decide to use a Stream Deck, they're about 150 bucks, but you don't actually need it. The only thing that's required for you is to make a donation to VB Cables, of all things. I'm totally not affiliated with them at all, but that's what you need. That's one of the tools you need to get all your audio synced up and all your video working in OBS and then pushed out to uh, to Zoom. And again, that's all detailed in my my 30 minute video that walks you through it. I'll make sure to put a link um, in the chat somewhere. And um, <laughs> in the chat, that's classic Zoom, a link in this video so that you can check that out and, and look that up. So all in all, uh, you know, really enjoy this setup, really enjoy um, what OBS brings to the virtual classroom table. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm having fun. So why not? Um, this video was really meant to be like a, an inspirational, like hype video to kind of get other people involved, other professors involved who are willing to take this step and willing to have some fun in their class as well as, you know, of course, highly instructive information. But uh, yeah, this is just my take on things. I hope you enjoyed it. The best way that you can support me is by hitting that like and subscribe button at the bottom of this video. You know, I work hard creating these and it's taken me a long time to figure all this information out. Like I've gone through several packets of software figured out what didn't work what did work this in that in the 30 minute video that is the detailed instruction the streamlined instruction on how to get everything working um, just the way you need it for zoom so if you watch this video all the way through i can't thank you enough my name is adam hughes thanks for watching fight on